Hey guys, it's Nuo Master, and welcome back to another Redstone video. Before I start today's video, I want to say thanks to all the awesome feedback I've been getting on my calculator. It's just amazing. I spent so much time on that, and uh, I've been getting some great feedback on that. Uh, I do have a world download for it now. Um, I didn't have it when I first uploaded the video, but, but um, I put it up now. Um, so you can check that out. You can play with it for yourselves. Um, if you're a member on the OR server, you can also come on here and uh, play around with it here. But um, yeah, it should be pretty much debugged. Uh, if there is a bug in the, if it's not giving you the right answer or something, just let me know and I'll fix that. Um, then I'll update the download and stuff. But anyways, on with today's video. Um, so uh, I was basically making parts for a uh, my new project, which I'm not gonna say. And uh, I've decided to go completely pistonless on all the things I make because pistons are very bad at timing. Like you can't time them very well uh, for most things. Um, there are some exceptions that make them easier to time, or well, they're, they're just a pain to time in all cases. Um, but I ended up needing a binary counter for one of my builds, and uh, this is a normal piston binary counter that uh, I would use if I were still using pistons. Um, it's pretty much the fastest piston uh, fastest piston counter there is that I'm that I'm aware of. But um yeah. Um I needed a pistonless one and uh I came up with this design here. This is using some Concepts that I uh, took from Benny's video on binary counters. This T flip flop here is his design, and uh, yeah, I, I improved on his design a lot by uh, making it smaller and only needing one uh, little uh, one propagate line. I'm not sure why he used two actually. It's kind of kind of weird, but um, anyways, uh, this one it's about three ticks per. Uh, or clock cycle, but there is an issue with this one. Um, with the piston counters, they're really easy to reset. You can just uh, put a line above here, power it, and then uh, also power these ones as well, and they'll reset it. Uh, but you you can't really do that with this one because it's repeater locks instead of pistons. You can't uh, power these from else. You can't power this. Uh, T flip flop from elsewhere to reset it, uh, just because of how, how it works. So um, this uh, particular counter design isn't resettable as long um, as well as the design that Benny came up with um, in his video. I'll put a link to that in the description because it still is really cool. But um, you can't reset it, which is kind of not good for a counter because you kind of want to be able to reset it when you want to. Um, doesn't make sense to have count all the way to the all the way to 15 or whatever before you reset it. Um, so what I did is I uh, made my own design here. Uh, this one it might look a bit awkward. Uh, basically, I used a uh, diagonal stack because it's a lot easier to wire more complex things uh, in a stack that's like that. So it has diagonal outputs like that. And this one, you can count up, you can count down, which this one can't do either, and you can reset it. Um, to reset it, I just put a uh, thing that powers the input to uh, the T flip flop here, so that uh, it cuts it, so it can't um, it can't input anything. And then when uh, this is toggled, then if there's something in there, it'll be cleared, but if there isn't something in there, the new thing won't come in, the new signal. So um, that's just how it clears, just like that. Since this powers the input. So uh, yeah, that will count up beautifully, synchronized, just like the piston one, and just like the one down there that uh, Benny came up with, pretty much. And then uh, this here also lets me count down. What I did is I ran the uh, propagates through a XNOR, which allows me to invert them when I want to, which um, 
inverting the propagates of the counter counts down instead. Um, yeah, I'll show I'll show how I'll show why. Um, let me just reset this manually. Um, so uh, this is normal counting up, and if I take these propagates here and I switch them around just like that. Um, now I'll count down. Let's see. So yeah, but um, as you can see, you kind of need uh, to uh, two two sets of memory for this. Um, one for the propagates here, and one for the actual output over here, so that you can invert one, invert the propagate without affecting the output. Over here, I didn't want to do that since that would be two sets of repeater locks, and that would be crazy. So I use the uh, XNORs instead, and uh, that works out pretty well. And due to the, how the reset of this counter works, I also uh, you also need to have this off to reset it, since it powers all of them and then uh, uh, powers all of them momentarily, and then uh, they all turn off. But yeah, I also have a uh, vertical design over here. This is basically that one down there it doesn't have the reset or the or the uh um counting down but it is very small like it's like four by four um yeah it's pretty small vertically tieable and then over here i have a vertically tieable one that you can uh count down and reset as well. So uh, just like this. The outputs are in here. And then counting down, it turn that one off since I use an XOR, not an XNOR here. So it's just invert. And now it's counting down. And I can reset it by turning that on and powering the reset. So yeah, there you go. I'm um, not going to do an explanation on in depth on how counters work in this video, just because it's kind of long already. Um, if you really want that, I can make one some other time. Uh, but uh, Benny's video on how these things work are, is pretty good already. Uh, and I'll link that in the description. since um, I'm pretty much using his T flip flop design for these. Um, this is what you have to do to reset this one. Uh, if you don't want to count all the way up, you just manually break the repeaters. Um, but yeah, anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.